one about protecting water, and these two books are very special because I feature my children. Maxwell Snackswell. I have Max here today, and he will be helping introduce the lesson. And this one is about healthy eating. And the puppet show we are going to be doing today is called Mason Meets a Mason Bee. And I also have my son, Mason, here today. So this whole uh, journey about learning about native bees started when Mason was a toddler. I found some ground nesting bees in our yard and I wanted to get rid of them because I was afraid they would hurt Mason. Then I learned all kinds of very surprising things about native bees. Some Pollinators like birds and bees and butterflies are really important to us because they make about a third of our food. However, the numbers of birds and bees and butterflies and all insects really are decreasing. That means it's the numbers are going down. Why is that? Let's find out. Bees are important because they pollinate flowers that turns into fruits and, and so this is what a full grocery store looks like today with, with bees. Without the help of bees pollinating, they look it looks like this, and that's pretty empty. That's why we need bees. So bees, the only place bees can live is the green area, but this is mostly not green, unfortunately, because we've been taking away their land for farming and other things. As you can see, the colors covering the most area are yellow and brown. Yellow is grazing land for cows, brown is farming. Other large land uses are forests in green and cities and towns in pink. We're taking away their food and habitat if, at this. So, if these are the wildflowers, and here's the insects that ha drink the, the nectar from them, and then there's turkey, wild turkey, that eat the insects, and then we eat the turkey. Basically, what happens when we take away, when we build farms and land where wildflowers are and we take away the wildflowers? Yeah, they're gonna fall. And we're just, and everything collapses and they, and they don't have enough food and to stay healthy so they, then they can't pollinate our fruits and vegetables. about what you think of bees. Why are you afraid of bees? Because they sting. And what colors are bees? Yellow and black. And what do we like to eat that bees make? Honey. I will ask you these three questions after the show, and see, let's see if you change your mind. Hi, everyone. I am so happy to see you all. It's a lovely 
day in the neighborhood. And it's a lovely day in Puppet Land. In fact, every day is a perfect day in Puppet Land because there are always flowers everywhere. I just love flowers. <sighs> Let me smell these. <sighs> but do you know who else likes flowers? Bees! And I am super duper pooper scooper afraid of bees. Will you guys tell me if you see a bee? Will you? I mean really loud. Okay? Because I really don't like bees. What? What is it? There's a bee? Where? Up? You guys, you're just tricking me. You know I'm afraid. Wait, what? There's another bee? Over here? No. Oh, over here? <sighs> Very funny. You know I'm afraid of bees, and so you're just trying to freak me out. Well, anyhow. Oh, there's another bee? Over here? Ah! A bee! Ah! Ah! A boy! Ah! Wait a minute. You're afraid of me? How can that be? Well, of course I'm again, and I think it is wise. Have you noticed your giant size? But you're a bee. Um, at least I think you're a bee, right? Well, of course I'm a bee. Why do you ask? You're not yellow and black. Not all bees are yellow and black. <gasps> they aren't? No. Come with me. You need to meet some of my friends. Wow, you have a lot of friends. I'm going to circle all the ones that look like flies to me. Looks like a fly. Flyville, what? A white bee? Those four bees are green. Really? That's not a fly? It's black! What was that? I think that was the sound of a myth being shattered. What's a myth? A myth is something that a lot of people think is true, but actually is not true. So the truth is, bees come in all different colors and sizes. Okay, okay, so bees aren't just yellow and black, but you're still mean. Oh, the thing is, we solitary bees are not mean, and we rarely ever sting. What? You don't? First you tell me that not all bees are yellow and black. And now you're telling me that not all bees sting? Yes, I keep to myself. I don't want any strife. Strife? Problems. I don't want any problems. You don't? Of course not. Who wants problems? I just want to visit flowers and live my own life. Oh, well, what's your life like? I'm a solitary bee, so that means I live and work alone. I don't live in a social community like honeybees where they all have different jobs to do. Oh yeah, social bees have a worker guard bee whose job it is to protect the hive and sting anyone that seems like they may mess with it, don't they? Yes. I don't have the luxury of having workers. I do everything myself. In the spring, I come out of my nesting tube. Sometimes we nest in plant stems or holes in trees or nesting tubes that people put out for us. 
Hmm, what are those gross gummy-like worms sticking out of the bee bread? Gross! Ha! Those are my precious baby eggs and they are adorable! Oh yeah! Adorable! That's what we meant to say, isn't it? I thought so! Then I get right to work finding a house gathering nectar and pollen from flowers to make bee bread for our 20 babies when they emerge from their cocoons. Oh, so those gold balls are your bee bread. Yes. And that's made out of nectar and pollen from flowers? Yes. What exactly is nectar and pollen? Pollen is a sticky yellow dust and nectar is the liquid I drink. When I mix it all together, it makes sort of a dough. I have to make 600 trips to wildflowers to get enough pollen and nectar for my babies. 600 trips? <sighs> Busy bee. The busiest. See? I don't have time or interest in stinging people. I guess that's myth number two you just shattered. If we were to put all of the world's bees in that circle, the entire blue part would be the bees that don't want to sting. That's 90%. Let's read this. 90% of the world's bees are solitary and not mean. The next stage is they turn into larvae. And see that the bee bread is gone now? Yeah! The larva ate the bee bread. And then what happens? The next stage of the life cycle is that they make a cocoon and spend Nine months that way, and in the next spring, they do it all over again. That's a busy life. What that was true actually isn't. Yeah, the wasps and the hornets give us gentle native bees a bad name. But I promise you, not all flying insects are the same. I'm a gentle Mason bee and... <gasps> Wait! A mason bee? My name is Mason too! Well, it's sure nice to meet you. Why are you called a mason bee? Masons are people who build things with stone. My name uh, is a mason bee because of our nesting habits of building mud walls. Kind of like people mason workers. I've never met a bee before. I've always thought bees were vicious. And I've never met a human either. I've always thought people were intentionally malicious. Malicious? You know, trying to hurt us. No, I don't know what you mean. People are nice. What you're telling me sounds fake. It sounds fictitious. What do you guys think out there? People are nice, right? I wish I were just making up a tale, but the truth is you people are making a sick. <coughs> Good. Well, 
Did you know that insects help your food grow? No, I didn't. That's news to me. Did you guys know that? Yes, my friend, it's true. That's what we gentle mason bees do. We bring pollen from flower to flower, and we keep on pollinating hour after hour. Um, what do you mean by pollinating, Mr. Mason Bee? Pollinating means pollen delivery. Come watch. You'll see. Look how I do a belly flop right on to these blossoms. I cover my whole belly with pollen. It's awesome! Then loaded with pollen grains to the next flower I fly. And when I take a drink, the pollen rubs off and I become bum -ba -da, the pollen delivery guy! Um... That's nice, but I still don't see what delivering pollen has to do with growing food for me. Pollen from one flower helps the seeds inside another flower grow. Oh, I get it now. That's super duper neat. Yes, it is. We help make all kinds of things. Like peas and beans and cherries and berries and more berries and more berries and cucumbers and squash. Whoa! That's a lot of food. Oh yeah it is and the list goes on and on. Oh my gosh. So the next time I sit down for lunch, I will thank you a bunch, Mr. Mason B. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. But it's actually not just me. You need to remember to thank the butterflies, the wasps, the moths, and the flies, and even beetles help pollinate to, to many people's surprise. Huh. One thing that troubles me so is that all bees are important in the world and people just don't know. <laughs> I guess that's true, Mr. Mason B. Before today, I had never even heard of you. Honeybees are only 1% of the world's bee population and they get all the attention and fame just because they make honey everyone knows their name. Wait, you don't make honey? Don't all bees make honey? I guess I just shattered another myth, didn't I? Oh, yes you did. I thought all bees made honey. Nope, I do not make honey. Well, if you don't ha make honey, do you have any other special skills? Oh, yes I do. I'm so glad you asked. As a mason bee, I am proud to say that I can pollinate as much as 100 honeybees on any given day. Whoa! 100 honeybees? That's so cool! Yeah, I know. I'm pretty cool. Wait, I'm just wondering. How can you pollinate so much? It seems to me that you might be just kind of making up a story. What do you guys think? Do you think that he can pollinate that much or is he just making up stories? Well, 
I'll tell you how I can pollinate that much. Just look how hairy I am. Yeah, I did notice that, but I didn't want to say anything. I thought it might be rude. Well, I love my hairy body because when I dive off onto those flowers, the flower pollen just sticks to me. Whereas the honeybees carry the pollen all neat and tidy on their pollen baskets on their legs. So honeybees are really good at collecting pollen and keeping it for themselves. And you're really good at pollinating because you're careless, hairy, and messy. I am sorry, Mr. Mason Bee, that people are hurting you with their sprays and you do so much good work for us. Tell me, what else should we do? Oh, that's easy. Just make good choices. You need to speak for us insects because we have no voices. Do you hear him talking? Yeah, me too. Uh, Mason Bee, I can hear you talking. Well, except for me, of course. I'm a talking Mason Bee. Ah, okay, all right. So, what kind of choices? Well, when people build their houses, they cut down the flowers and take away our houses. It would be very, very kind if you could plant us some more flowers. We don't have enough to eat. Whoa. Sure, I love flowers. What kind of flowers do you enjoy? Look, I grow natures. What? What do you mean by that? Well, let's just look down here. Native plants are sometimes called wildflowers, and they have they are plants that have always been here. They give pollinators plenty of nectar and pollen. When I visit a wildflower, I get a big drink like this. drink. Yeah, but when I visit a flower called a cultivar that has been designed and changed by people to make it fancier, like this flower on the bottom, I can only get a little drink like this. Whoa! So those native natural wildflower plants are, plants are way better for you, aren't they? Oh, yes they are. All growing season long, I hope your blooms last to help me and my friends eat every day because we really don't like to fast. Mason B, don't you worry. People are nice. Now that we understand your problems, we can change our ways in a hurry. Goodbye and thank you, Mason boy. Our time together was a joy. I look forward to seeing you later. Yeah, see you later, pollinator. After a while, compost pile. Compost pile? What? Toodaloo and right back at you. As Mason turned and waved, he was feeling strong and brave. Because of bees, he was no longer afraid. In fact, he felt like a superhero because he knew he had an extremely important job to do. He is going to plant wildflowers to protect the bees. Are you? So that brings us to the end of our show. 
but just the beginning of helping pollinators. Hi. Like I said before, I was going to tell you after this, be, um, the same questions. I am going to do that. Here's the first. Here's the first question. Do all bees sing? No. Ninety percent solitary bees don't sting. Next one. Are all bees yellow and black? No. A lot of bees are colored like flies and other animals too. Do all bees make honey? No. Only honey bees make honey. Thank you for watching our show. And remember, even though most native bees are really gentle, they can be easily confused with wasps, which are aggressive. So if you don't know what an insect is for sure, be cautious around it. I hope you can get outside and see what's nesting around your home. <laughs>